So do you know what could could I? Sorry, how could I? Uh, so it's not darkness could I? It's spicy could I? <laughs> That's a good guess. Uh, it's the opposite. Yeah, fine. Spicy, huh? I don't think that's pronounced as could I, uh, but it's probably similar to that. It's like because it does sound kind of right. What is spicy? Um, but could I is dark, and it kind of is dark like dim rather than dark like darkness. And could I is an e adjective, which you don't really need to know right now because we're not going to see that. But anyway, your job mm -hmm. is to remember that this kanji. The sun um sound is kura. 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 Can you read this for me? Matsukura. Oh. Hai, matsukura. Hai. Ma. So this ju right here is actually a small ju. Hard to tell. So makura mm. is how this is pronounced. Makura. Makura. Also, spicy is ka. Rai. Karai. Ka at the front. So very similar to kurai, but ka. So makura is a na adjective. So you use na as the glue, not e. Makura. Mm. Makura. Uh, ma is like completely. So this means completely dim. So super dim. Um, mm. Can you read the sentence for me? A uh, thief no, which is... <laughs> dobutsu no dobutsu. Uh, dobutsu, dobutsu is animal. It does Hi. start with a doll, but it's not a long doll. Dobu. No. It's actually your doll right here. It's doro. Doru. Hi. Doro. 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 Hi. Dorobo. Nice. Dorobo no. Fukuro no. Naka no yo na. Makura na. Uh, yoru. So what does this mean? I'd recommend starting on the bottom. Go that right. way. So night na uh mak makura. makura which is makura which is dim or completely dim. Hi. Right. So a night, night that is completely dim. Completely dim. What does yo tell us? Yona, so night that's completely dim, like Naka inside no Fukuro, the bag no um do do not do uh do yep do has three dorobo yep dorobo like a thief hi. So a night as dark, as totally dim as the insides of what? Insides of a fukuro. So bag no torobo. So the thief's bag. Exactly. Perfect. So in Japanese, our question words like <laughs> nani, doko, and dare can have mo added to it to basically add the meaning of either no or every to it. For example, do you know what doko means? Oku means where? Hi. Oh. So when you add mo, it's either going to mean nowhere or everywhere. What tells us whether or not it's nowhere or everywhere depends on the form of the verb at the end of the sentence. So, do, so doko um, ni mo iru would be to exist everywhere and doko, doko ni mo um, nai, inai, would be to not exist anywhere. So to exist in nowhere. So basically oh, if the sent form is negative, it becomes no. And if it's positive, then it's every. Every, hi. So what does nani mean? Nani means what? So what does it turn into when we add mo to it? Nani mo? Nani mo. So what becomes? He? Nothing or everything. Yep, nothing or everything. So no what or every what. Which in English, we do have separate words for that because we're confusing. Where is so nice because it's the same here. It's got the actual pattern. Mm. But we have who turns into one and thing turns in, was is from what. 
but we don't have a comparison word for where. Japanese, so easy, doesn't even have those weird words. Anyway, so, so how would you say no one's here in Japanese using dare, who is, which is who? Uh, no one's here. Dare no inai? That's a good guess. Um, so normally, you don't normally attach um, nouns to verbs uh, using no. Um, theoretically, you could, but normally we don't want to, we're not describing not existing as who, right? That's not really our goal. So, so we want some kind of particle here rather than attacher. That is so, Perfect. Dare mo inai. So theoretically, dare wa inai would mean someone. So you don't want to have this like a question mark. Dare wa inai? Who's not here? It's kind of what that's saying. So dare mo inai means no one's here. So mo can replace um, wa. Mo can replace wa and um, ga. And it can't replace ni. So that's why when earlier in my example sentence, I added ni to dokomo, doko ni mo. Mm. Because it can't replace me, but it can replace wa and ga. Okay. Tori has the meaning of street or like a road. Tori. Can you read this for me? Tori ni dare mo inai. Hi. What does this mean? So, no one's in the street. Exactly. There's no one in the street. Okay. So, this is a really interesting thing about Japanese. And that's something that really confuses people when we learn Japanese. Is that mm. wa and ga, what they mark, they mark the same thing in different contexts. So, wa is the boring topic, is, is the boring subject marker. So, if it, wa is attached to the subject, it's not telling us anything. It's just, it's a robot, basically. There is a thief. When you use ga to mark the subject, suddenly we're making it very important that we that you know there's a thief here. Dorobo ga iru! In English, this would be adding stress to the subject. So there, so mm. thief is here. I, I can't really act very well. <laughs> but um and that's what's really confusing for learning English is that we use stress to illustrate this point. So it's very hard to like show this in like writing or something like that. So if you you might have heard a sentence like I killed five I I didn't kill five men, for example. Insinuates different things mm -hmm. depending on what part you stress. I didn't kill five men would mean mm -hmm. you might know who did, but so, so five men are dead. You didn't do it. You might know who did. And if you said I didn't kill five men that would instead insinuate that you did something to five men and he said i didn't kill didn't five kill men mm -hmm. then suddenly we killed a different number of men so depending on what so. you stress insinuates different things in japanese their particles help illustrate that point so ga is saying this is being stressed in english so for whatever reason we want it's very important for you to know that there is a thief in this location for example, it might be like, who's here? You might say, oh, a thief is here. Want to make sure you know that. Now, objects of sentences can also be marked by ga and wa. By default, um, ga marks like, for example, ringo ga suki. I like apples. This is the normal thing you do. This is the generic one, the normal guy. Wa can be used whenever ga is marking an object to make it very like important for you to know something about this. So, um, for example, this this might show up if someone's like, "Oh, you love um oranges, don't you?" and you are so incredibly insulted by this that they would dare insinuate that you like oranges when you've told them twenty thousand times you love apples. Then you would oh. use wa here. So this right here is called the topic marker wa. It's saying it's marking the topic. And this wa can occur in a lot of different locations, such as, for example, this right here is not subject wa, this is topic wa. Can you read the sentence for me? Soko ni wa ikasenai. Hi. 
So, ikasenai is to not allow someone to go. So, soko ni ikasenai is grammatically correct. It means I will not allow you to go over there. Adding I... wa is adding stress to the soko, being like, I will not allow you to go to that location. That location specifically, mm. you're not allowed to go there. And it makes it very aggressive. Like that, it's very important for you to know you're not allowed to go there. Versus without the wa, as I said, it's more boring. It's not really telling us anything in particular without some kind of extra context. But wa gives the stress to soko. So can you read the sentence for me? Koi ni hadare mo inai. Oh, it's not hard. Oh, yeah, it is hard. Hai. Hadare mo inai. Yep. So, tori ni wa dare mo inai. What does that mean? Inai. So, tori. Tori. No. Tori. Eh. Tori. What did that mean? Tori. Tori wa dare mo inai. Street, hi. Hi, Tori street. street, hi. Street, what? Dare no inai. Dare mo inai. So it's no one's in the street, but the word is adding emphasis. Yes. No one's in the street. Exactly. No one is in the street. So it's very important for us to know that the street right now is empty. Perhaps there's somebody like in the houses nearby or something like that. We want you to be very much paying attention that right now there's no one in the streets except for maybe the main character. Streets are empty. <laughs> so it makes it kind of dramatic. Do you know what kawa means? River. Hi. Sorry, I don't know why it took me a second. <laughs> you know what nagareru means? Mm. Nagareru. Uh, nagae, nagareru. Uh, not similar um, to nagai at all. No relation. Okay. <laughs> to flow? Yes, yeah, nagareru is to flow. Flow. So rivers flow. Um, so now you have to remember kawa as the kanji. Kawa river. Mm. Okay. So this is something that um I've noticed in Japanese is that O marks kind of objects that there's some amount of intent in there. The idea is that somebody made a decision for this verb to happen and for this verb to affect the object. Ga, on the other hand, insinuates there was no actual intent here. The thing kind of just happened to occur. For example, majitsu wa kawa o nagasu means the magician made the river flow. Versus, can you read the sentence for me? Kawa ga nagareru. So the river just flows. Yeah, it just flows. This would be the normal thing you'd see, right? Because rivers just naturally flow. You're not really talking about something causing this to happen necessarily it's more just the act the river the river is flowing going oh looks like there is a uh a second uh, my headset is connected hmm. uh, <laughs> um so i think your headphones still disconnected so let me know when it's back to normal do, 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 do. Oh. I think I figured out the problem. Oh, did you? It should work in like a few seconds because it takes a bit. Makes sense. Hi. Okay. I okay. Okay. <laughs> so rivers, mm -hmm. you know, they just normally flow. There's normally not like someone being like, I'm going to irrigate the river right now and it's going to go flowing over here. So if you want to focus on someone irrigating, you would use O with a different verb than with um to flow in general. Um, kiri. Do you happen to know what kiri means? Uh, is it something to do with clouds? Yes. Kiri is fog, which is mm. or mist. Both both um work with kiri, I believe. Nice. Um, can you read this for me and tell me what it means? Kiri ga 
Katie ka nakareru. So the fog or mist blows. Yes. Perfect. So here's this kara that we saw earlier today. So when kara yeah. occurs after a noun like pokitto, it means from. Can you do me a favor and read the sentence for me? Majitsushi no pokitto kara. Um, dorobo o nisunda. Sadly, not no dorobo. This right here is oh, ma. Okay. Then it's do. Uh. Then it's se. Ki. Ma do se ki. Ma do se ki. Hai. Ma do se ki. Majitsushi no pocket to. It's the pocket of the magician from. And from the pocket and of the magician. What happened? Mm. Nisunda. Nisunda. Oh, Nisunda. Nisunda. Oh. From the Sumu. Mm. Sumu. Sun? Chiyo. So Nisumu has the kanji in here for next and plate. Like you're so hungry, you stole someone else's plate. Next plate, please. Mine now. Mwahahaha. <laughs> Because um, hmm. Nisumu is to steal. And then it's in da form, which tells us what? Uh, So we stole. Yes. Or so he stole. stole what? Ah, uh, Madoseki. The Hi. magical rock. Exactly. So, in other words, if you don't know the subject, you can just use I or they, whichever works fine. So I stole hmm. the magical stone from the magician's pocket. Or they stole the magical mm. stone from the magician's pocket. Anyway, how would you say fog flows from the river? So fog flows, that would be fog. Kiri, kiri no nagareru kara. Kara. Dog river. How do I say that? Um... Kara na be like nawa this? Kawa this? Uh kawa is river. So kawa. you kind of did a nonsensical sentence right here. You said um mm -hmm. because the fog flows, river. <laughs> oh, I'm not sense. sure what that's saying. So first off, let's go look at the example sentence we read earlier. That's why these are up mm. here. Let's go look at this. We say pocket to kara. So from the pocket. And we want to say mm -hmm, from okay. the river. So what order do you think this is telling us we gotta mm. put stuff in? That would be kawakara. Yep, kawakara. Correct. From the river. Boom. We got then we wanna say fog flows. Kawakara. Kiri no nagareru. So I kind of told you this earlier about particles and what roles they um give us. So no can replace ga. That is a fact. However, it only replaces ga, only replaces in, ga relative clauses. in relative clauses. Stop it. Stop it again. I know. Uh, mm. One second. I think my battery's on. That's why it's doing that. Let's charge yeah. it real quick. Boop, 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 boop.
。ハロー。ハロー。聞こえる。聞こえる。聞こえる。うん。OK。So, in this sentence, we want there to be a object that is being affected by the verb. Objects are marked by O or GA. They're not marked by no normally. No can mark certain objects in relative clauses, but this is not a relative clause yet.、Um, so, what particle do you think we go in here? O or GA? Hmm. Object verb. I guess in this case it'd be O. That's、Probably. a good guess. So, O insinuates intent. Did somebody make the fog flow from the river? Are we wanting to insinuate that?、Uh, no. So, because、mm. of that, we use ga, because fog just flows from rivers. That's just like a natural part of nature. That's what we want to focus on. So, that's why we use ga. Okay. So, next is the word roji. Do you remember what roji meant? Roji. This is very alleyway.、Context. Yeah. G、mm. shows up to mean like earth, and ro shows up in road. But yeah, roji is alleyway. Alleyway. Hi. So your job is remember the G part of roji because it's so common. Roji. Hi. Hi. So next is komu. Komu is a word you don't see very often by itself, but it's used a lot in compound verbs. So, compound verbs are used a lot in Japanese. Though they're not normally brought up that much in class. But basically, you take two verbs, mash them together to make a verb that has a slightly more complex meaning. Komu kind of has a into kind of meaning that it adds to verbs. So, the way how you make compound verbs is that you get stem form, which is adding basically e to the dictionary form of the verb, and you just、mm. stick it on to the other verb. Do you know what yomu means? To sleep. That's a good guess.、Um, yomu is to read. Read. Hi. To read. Ageru、mm. is to raise. For example, you can use it to raise your voice. So, yomi ageru means to read out loud, to read while raising your voice. Hajimedu is to start. So, Yomi Hajimedu is to start reading.、Um, Hajimedu, funnily enough, is taught like it's a grammar point, but it's actually just a compound verb. You will also see these with nouns like kata, which is the way of. So, hashiru plus kata is hashiri kata, the way of running. So, you see these a lot. The majority of these compound verbs are in dictionaries, but some of them aren't. It's just so it's just a good thing to kind of have in your head that sometimes. These don't actually have separate dictionary actions. So, nagareru was the flow, and komu adds an into meaning. So, nagare komu is the flow into. That's when they use it. Nagare komu. Right. Flow into. What did this end with? Start with ro and it meant alleyway.、Mm, the country for earth. Hi.、Uh, hi. Roki? Roki? Good guess. It's actually G. So this is going to be、G. pronounced either as Chi or G. So it only has two possible pronunciations Chi or G.、Um, when it's pronounced、mm. as which, it's pretty random. For example, Chi Zu. Chi Zu. It's pronounced、Chizu. as Chi for map. But this right here is G. So Ro G. Ro G. Okay. So let's go read this sentence. A kawa kara kiri ga nagare komu ro roji. Perfect, roji. So in this context, this ga can be a no. You could have that as no. Okay. That would be, this would be, this is a relative clause right here. We're using this clause to、um, describe this. This is so that it's easier to read, but if this wasn't a relative clause, Then ga would be the, what you'd want to use. But no is allowed as a replacement. Okay, so right、mm. here we're describing a roji, which do you know what roji meant? Roji. Roji is alleyway. Hi, alleyway. So what happened to this alleyway? What's some important information are they giving to us? 
ん、うん、流れ込む。はい。川から霧が流れ込む。そう。So the river から。From the river. From the river mist が。mist is 流れ込む。So mist is flowing. What does komu add to that? Flowing. Flowing in a komu way. Hi. Hey, komu it has a meaning on its own to like cramp something, like the cramp into something. So it means to go、mm. into whenever it gets added to stuff. So nagare komu means that in this context, from the river, the mist flows into the alleyways.、Mm. So if you just said like nagareru, that would be kind of weird. It just would be like, The mist is flowing river. Like, what? It's not, anyway. what, what do you mean? <laughs> we need to have the into meaning. So, in English, we don't really do this kind of word compounding, but this is super common in Japanese to have some kind of extra verb here to allow some little extra flavor. So, it'll flow into nagare komu. Hi. And you'll see this a lot.、Um, for example, nigeru is to run away, and、um, nige komu is to run away. Into something, so you hot. This is like your hiding spot. So,、mm. komu, this is, means you ran away and you kind of ended up somewhere where you komu'd to go into.、Um, so, this word ended with G. Do you know what it started with? G, G. Hi. This was the kanji for street. It is. Kind of. It is the kanji for street. Maji? No, not Maji. It is Ro. Ah, Roji. Hi, Roji. And what does Roji mean? Roji means alleyway. Perfect. How do you think you read this? This was a kanji we saw earlier today. This is Oyami? Good guess. This is Ku Da. Can you read it for me again? Kurami. Yep, Kurayami. kurayami. So, Kurayami, kurayami. is、um, we get darkness and we're adding dim to it. So, basically, it's another way to say super dark. Dark darkness. Dark. Dim darkness.、Um, and can you read this for me? This is Roji wa. <laughs> It's a ma. So, no, he, he's not there. You don't see it. <laughs> oh, it's ma. Hi. Ma. Uh, ma j i a m i So, that is. It. r o j i wa ma. We just saw this guy. r o j i wa. Hmm. Met dim. Oh, b e n e It's like, kuru. Oh, hi, kuru. It does start with ku. Yes, kura. Kura、ah. kura. You're correct. Kura. So, what is the saying? The alleyway is what? The alleyway is completely kurayami. It's completely、yep. very dark. dark. Exactly. Perfect. And that is where we're going to stop for today.、Um, any questions before we go?